actually be 4.8. But between Russia and China, the reading is going to be small difference of about 1%, um, 1, 1 or 2 percent. But here's what happened in Fukushima. The readings were 6.1 in Japan and in Russia, which is close to Japan, it was about a 0 .60, 0 0.60. So that means that the earthquake was a 6 earthquake on the Richter scale. Now, cannot be, none of the Richter scales are off by more than 1 or 2 percent. So if Russia says it was a 6.1 and China says it was a 6.1 and Japan said it was a 6.1 in the beginning, that means it was a 6.1. But when they come up with this 9 point, excuse me, when they come up with this 9.1, Japan and everybody said it was a 6.9 in the beginning. I got the numbers confused. But either way, it can only be a disparity of a few percent, not three points. That's impossible. Anybody that understands the Richter scale knows that an earthquake could be off a few percentage points, but it cannot be off more than that. It's impossible for that to happen. If Russia says it's a 6.1, and Japan says it's a 6.1, and China says it's a 6.1, and somebody comes along and says it's a 6.2, that's possible. But no can it be any more than a 6.3 anywhere in the world. Because of the Richter scale, the very accurate scale compensates for the distance. So that means they fudged with the numbers. They fudge with the numbers because it was never an earthquake in Japan. That's what they have doing. That's what they're doing. They're killing the people in the world. And they're doing it on purpose. Should have painted these stanchions 
Well, they were off of them. That's but it doesn't matter because I have three coats of oil-based paint on it already. If the water comes in the basement again, uh, that's what happens. It won't hurt it so much. It's not a very good thing, but it won't kill it. It won't destroy it. Like if it was just a regular steel. Plus, this is a very good grade of steel. Yeah, I should have painted these stanchions first. Like I said, I have a three coats of oil-based paint on them. And the one day I was putting them together, and I was in a hurry to get a bench built. No big a deal, really.
Now we have one coat there. We have enough to do a coat and a half. When you go over a paint job, after it dries to the touch, it's called a coat and a half. When you're doing waterproofing, which I'm doing now, it's better to either let it dry to the touch and put another coat on, coat and a half, or, or let it dry for 30 days and put another coat on. Then let the first coat dry 100%. Because this way with the coat and a half, with the coat and a half, it dries together after if you let it dry till tomorrow and you put another coat on it won't dry together they'll dry separately 30 years from now it makes a difference 30 days from now you never know the difference and a good painter knows the difference now I'm a good painter that last. We'll have to do this next. Get this dust out of here.
down for that. Okay. Put the bench back up against the wall. Uh -huh. I'm get a little rag. Okay. This, for all intents and purposes, I think we're done. I can certainly put this roller and the stirring stick back into the bucket and I can put the cover on the bucket to keep the miscellaneous dust. This did not get any paint on it. So this can go into the brush bucket. Okay, and now now for my next trick. Still has to go this way, three quarters of an inch. And the way to do that is to hit these stanchions this way, three quarters of an inch or one inch. And the bench will want to go over there because that's where the legs are. This is the one that's stopping it from going over. Yes, it was.
Now we don't want these up against the wall anyway. So can pull this one out. Go on against the wall in case you have to wash the dirt behind them. And that's the way they made it. So you could wash the dirt behind the feet. Okay. Alright. Alright, that's behind the paint painted back there. Okay. I gotta get something from the back. Gotta do something in the back here. Uh, then when I come back, we're going to paint the back of the plywood and the notches that I cut before, and also the front edge, which is by the door. We're not going to paint that. I have to put a file to that first, a little rasp, knock off the edges, make sure that fits before we paint that. But we can paint the rest of the plywood and we can put the second piece of plywood on. That won't be a problem. Now, uh, the paintbrush. Okay, I need a one piece of paper towel to knock off one drop of water that I got on the on the window before, otherwise that would never come off. It'll come off very easy now, but you let that dry on there, and that's where it will stay forever. 